Hi everybody, JJ here with ASUS and excited to be able to talk about some awesome peripherals. So uh, what we've got right here is actually gonna be a stack of different pieces of hardware that we're gonna be talking about that I know a lot of you guys have been uh, asking us about and that's gonna be specifically our latest generation of peripherals, um, but in white and specifically moonlight white. So this is actually something that we've been working on for a long time, uh, looking to help to flesh out the actual already pretty comprehensive white product portfolio that we already offer where we've got white motherboards, graphics cards, power supply, supplies, chassis, coolers, routers, uh, even monitors, uh, really kind of an extensive lineup. But one of the things that we did have missing was going to be a series of white peripherals, namely a keyboard, a mouse, and a headset. And we're excited now to finally introduce those with uh, the latest generation here with the Moonlight White series. And I think these are going to be a fantastic option for those of you looking to be able to upgrade to some really sweet, awesome gaming gear, but also really have that nice, bright, clean, aesthetic that you can have with both black and white components, but that white really helps to elevate when you talk about the reflectivity and the vibrance that it offers, especially when it comes to things like RGB lighting, which you can see right here. So I'm um, excited to be able to go ahead and kick off and let you guys know what these peripherals are gonna be bringing to the table in terms of their features, their functions, and their specifications. And for those of you joining us here on the stream, also excited for you guys to have the opportunity to actually be able to win some awesome hardware. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure to keep it tuned here until the end of the stream. This uh, giveaway is gonna be limited to just our North American users. So do keep in mind that if you are going to be participating in the end of the stream quiz, where we are going to be giving away three pieces of hardware, you do need to be based in North America. So that's in the United States or Canada. Uh, we're going to have a cool little quiz at the end to kind of make sure that you've been uh, keeping track of essentially some of the cool features, functions, and specifications that we've got on these latest generation of Moonlight White series peripherals. And we will go from there. Hey, Greg, uh, happy to have you here on the stream, man. Um, white case fans? Nope, as of right now, nothing planned in terms of white case fans specifically, but you never know. Uh, we've got, like I said, a really, really big lineup when it comes to a white series of products, and we're looking to continue to evolve it and expand upon it. Um, so as always, you know, make sure to just keep it tuned here to our social media channels or the PC DIY stream on Fridays to hopefully find out about what we got going on in terms of the latest and greatest from Asus. All right, man. Hey, Connor, uh, thanks for joining us here on the stream. Yeah, we're going to actually be giving away. Uh, let me actually double check uh, uh, with our team, but I believe in terms of our giveaway, we've got three items that we're going to be giving away. Um, so let me just double check that, uh, you guys. Yeah, so we're going to be doing a keyboard, a mouse, and a uh, headset. So pretty much each one of the items that you see right here, there's going to be opportunity to win. So the RG Strix Scope TKL, the ROG Strix Go Core uh, gaming headset, and then the ROG Strix Impact 2 gaming mouse. So all of those are going to have an opportunity in terms of winning those at the end of the stream. So uh, let's go ahead and kick things off here. Hey, Aaron, uh, 10 key numpad. So no, this is a TKL based keyboard. And that's actually what we're going to be talking about here just in a moment is helping to understand the difference if you're not as familiar with a TKL based keyboard or a more compact keyboard that actually doesn't feature a numpad or a 10 key. Um, this is something that's a little bit newer, but it has been around now for a while. And it's actually been around from RG peripherals perspective for quite some time, even going back to like our models like our Claymore, which launched more than five years ago was actually a, a TKL based keyboard, but it did also have the ability to add the numpad. So Let's go ahead and first uh, just kick things off with actually talking about this guy, the ROG Strix Scope NX uh, TKL Moonlight. So that's this keyboard right here. And I think the first thing that I just want to be able to talk a little bit about is giving you guys a reference in terms of understanding the size difference when we're talking about a traditional keyboard. So uh, let me go ahead and pull another keyboard out here. So right here, this is what you would probably be a little bit more traditionally kind of... Um, thinking about when you think about kind of a standard size keyboard. So this is our RG Strix Scope keyboard. It's a full size keyboard. And as you can see, it has the 10 key on there, right? Now, that of course is gonna be quite a bit more compact than something like you see right here in front of me, which is even a more compact keyboard with the RG Falchion, which is even gonna be smaller than a 10 key, uh, excuse me, a, a TKL based keyboard. And so let's go ahead and uh, just show you guys a little bit how this kind of stacks up in terms of the overall dimensions. So let me go ahead and a moment. And grab this right here. All right, and so here you guys can see, we've got the T 
PKL, and you're going to see that you've got pretty much all your standard keys. You've got dedicated arrow keys, right? But then when we compare that, if we go here with the full size, you can see just the difference in terms of a full size keyboard, in terms of how much larger it is uh, because of where you have uh, the numpad, right? And if we go ahead and compare that to, let's say, something a bit more compact, like the uh, Felcheon, you can actually see right there how much more compact the Falchion is, right? So the big focus that you have when you talk about a more compact keyboard is going to be that you're essentially going to be one, giving yourself the flexibility of having something spaced out a little bit more uh, and a little bit more comfortably as well as a little bit more ergonomically. So one of the challenges you have when you talk about going with a more kind of uh, traditional sized keyboard like this is that it's great, it gives you a lot of different types of keys, great option, but when you talk about the spacing, uh, especially when you talk about here, like your shoulder, moving down your arm, uh, this is actually going to be a little bit more kind of flexed outwards, right? And so you would be more kind of like this. And so when you're kind of gaming, you actually are putting a little bit more strain. So it's actually ergonomically not as ideal. And so the benefit of having something that's a bit more compact is you can actually bring this together, you can tighten up your mouse movements, and you can even do things like you can angle the keyboard. So you, maybe you want to keep your kind of your WASD here, and then you want to use your mouse in terms of having a bit more free movement in this regard. Uh, overall, I would definitely say that for most users that if they're not focused on a high level of kind of productivity, one of the really cool things that you do get when you move over to something like this is going to be that improved level of kind of ergonomics and just a little bit more comfortable layout. And of course, it is also going to be a little bit cleaner. Uh, let me go ahead. Hey, Greg. Uh, yeah, I would definitely agree. Uh, when you talk about they're much better when it comes to just for kind of gaming in terms of the overall experience. Awesome. Uh, Cool, very cool, Jay, that you picked up actually a Moonlight White keyboard. Yeah, um, they are actually right now listed on Amazon pretty much all the current uh, Moonlight White peripherals. Um, so that's actually what we're running through. And for those of you guys, you haven't picked it up again, like I said, if you stay through all the way to the end of the stream, we're going to have a quiz for those of you in North America. You're going to have an opportunity to win a one of three different pieces of hardware, a keyboard, mouse, or a headset. Um, and right now, we're just going through a little bit of kind of understanding some of the lay of the land when it comes to um, you know, uh, what a TKL keyboard is compared to, let's say, a traditional full size base keyboard. Uh, for those of you who are wondering about, this is again, the keyboard that we're talking about. Uh, link should pop up there in the chat if you guys are interested in actually picking it up. It is right now available. It's 119, but we're going to uh, be going into, of course, more of the specifics and regarding the kind of the features and the functions and the aspects that you have right here. So, you can see it's a bit more compact keyboard. Now let's go ahead and talk a little bit more about some of the other design elements that you've got on uh, this keyboard here. So go ahead and just move this keyboard here a little bit to off. And we'll kind of give you guys a little bit of a tour in terms of some of the cool elements. So. Uh, when you're looking at the top, one of the cool things you'll notice is that we actually did do rounded edges. Uh, they are, are going to feel nice and soft. Some of the other keyboards on the market, they have a little bit more kind of hard edges, and it might seem kind of like a small detail, but I definitely would say that I prefer this type of design. It just makes it a little bit more comfortable when you talk about kind of just when you're handling the keyboard and working with it. It just makes it a nice and softer experience. The top plate right here, this is an aluminum top plate that you have. It's a silver finish, and then of course you have the white uh, ABS keycaps. Now these keycaps, in case you're wondering, they're not PBT, but they have been specially coded. We actually went through a very extensive process um, to actually got no, not only go through actually dew and humidity testing, but to actually ensure abrasion performance. Because one of the things that you definitely want is you want this to kind of last and you want it to feel confident that it's gonna be able to hold up over time. So we did actually put extra care and this is gonna be a big difference as opposed to like I'd say lower quality or cheaper white type of keyboard offering on the market. They might not offer any type of UV treatment or multi-layer finishing to their keycaps um, to be able to offer, I think, a bit more of a premium experience. Of course, you can see that this is going to be per key uh, RGB lighting that's present on the keyboard. So every single one of the keys does feature RGB lighting. You can see RGB lighting there for the ROGI that's on the keyboard. Um, you can also actually, these four lock LEDs also do feature actually RGB lighting, which is pretty cool as well. And then a really cool element is going to be another zone of RGB lighting, which is going to be this whole RGB light bar, which is in the front. It looks really slick. It's got a really cool kind of effect to it. it gives you this nice underglow design. Now, uh, some of you might be wondering about in terms of kind of control functionality, one of the really cool things pretty much with all of our RGB keyboards 
rewards is that you don't have to be limited to just using our ROG Armory Crate and Aura Creator software. Now with the Armory Crate software, you can go through 10 different types of uh, profiles in terms of kind of customizing the lighting sequences and I'll show you what some of those look like. You could also use Aura Creator and have full independent zone control. So literally if you want to kind of have the lighting uh, for maybe certain keys, and then you want to have the light bar have an entirely different effect, you can do that through our Aura Creator software and you can even time it for different uh, cycles. So you can have it like refresh uh, or kind of reset, you know, after five seconds, 10 seconds, three minutes, you can go through and kind of really customize that to your extent. But one of the cool things is you do have the ability that you can go ahead and do hardware level control. So let me see if I can go ahead and um, make some of these adjustments here. So give me one second. Yeah. Sorry, just trying to look upside down there. There we go. Okay, so uh, if you guys can see right here, here you got your function key, and here's your arrow keys. So these arrow keys will allow you to do hardware level control based on depression of the function key. So if you press the function key and then your arrow keys, uh, if let's say you toggle up and down, you can control the brightness. And then if you go side to side, you can actually shift through hardware level modes. So if you don't want to have to utilize any software, that is a really nice element in terms of just making the experience that much more streamlined. Um, because this is a TKL based keyboard and focus a little bit more kind of towards travel, one of the other cool things is the cable's entirely detachable. So you can see right there, detach the cable. And um, now you don't have to worry about kind of having a cable. This is nice if kind of you move things around or kind of you want to take it with you or anything like that. Um, the cable that it comes with is a nice gray braided cable. It's good quality and it is a USB-C connection. And one of the cool things is of course you saw here with the RG Falchion that I have, You've got a nice kind of just different USB-C cable that's available to you. If you want to go with custom cables, you can do that. Um, you know, some different examples. I'll show you guys some stuff here. So like, here's just kind of you know, some different options if you wanted to wire those up. Super simple. You got your USB-C uh, connection right there, USB-C port, plug in the cable, and bam, you can kind of customize it. You can go with whatever you want. So um, that is just a nice level of flexibility. Uh, especially when you're moving things around or if, like I said, you just want to kind of have things tailored to your kind of gaming setup, right? Uh, let me just double check, see if there's any questions there. Hey, Stefan, uh, we're not talking about any of the Zen Wi-Fi series product, but make sure to keep it tuned to the Asus PC DIY stream on Fridays. We're definitely going to be covering a new and upcoming products, including anything on our networking side. So definitely make sure to keep it tuned there. Um, yeah, Houston, definitely agree, man. It is a very, very clean design in terms of the overall uh, design aesthetic. So um, now when you also talk about, of course, the keycaps and uh, the, the switches on here, these are our RG NX based switches. And I'll talk a little bit more about how the NX switches are differ from your kind of traditional standard industry uh, MX based switches, um, but they do use traditional uh, stems. So that does mean that if you do want to go ahead and take off uh, the keycaps and you want to replace them and you want to do something entirely different, you can do that. As an example, I, I just want to show you guys here. Uh, this is the RG Strict Scope in black. So this is the same exact keyboard in black. That's the most popular model that we actually offer, even though we now have a white. Um, but if you want to change things up, you can get all different types of you know keycaps and you can swap them out. So you can customize this the aesthetic. I think actually these caps would look fantastic on this uh, silver accent. I think it looked really interesting or same thing, or maybe the, uh, uh, the pudding keycaps here that I have, uh, would also look really good here on this keyboard. But that's one of the really nice things is that this keyboard really has a really, really nice design aesthetic right off the bat uh, when you take it outside of the box, right? So uh, continuing on in terms of kind of what is going to be um, some of the other features here in terms of the hardware design is that when you take a look here at the back, uh, it's got a dual textured finish. You do have adjustable feet right here that you can go ahead and swing out if you do need that to be elevated so that you can go ahead and keep your hands in a more kind of ergonomic position. That is an uh, option available to you. Um, very nice and firm so that when you do go ahead and lay this down, um, it's not going to move. It does really kind of sit in place. You know, I'm 6'2", um, about 215. And, you know, I can definitely put my weight down on something and it keeps a pretty level of kind of rigid placement. Um, so that's definitely nice uh, when you talk about just kind of setting it up. 
Now, something you're not gonna see, but it's on the inside of the uh, keyboard is gonna be that it does feature onboard memory profiles. So some of the other keyboards in the market might not feature onboard memory profiles. You actually have a six in total. There's a default memory profile, and then there's five that you can easily toggle through. And I'll show you quickly here on our secondary cam, but you can toggle through those um, actually use, uh, utilizing these buttons right here. So the one, two, three, four, five. Um, you pretty much just hold the function, hit one of those, and you can toggle back and forth between different safe profiles. So maybe you want number one to be kind of your normal, um, I'd say daily driver kind of keyboard profile. So that's got maybe custom macros and setup configurations, things like that, when you're using kind of email, web browsing, opening up uh, editing applications, whatever you might be doing. And then, you know, secondary profile might be specific to a game. And then another one might be specific to another game. Um, maybe you want to have something kind of tuned specific to RTS, then another one might be tuned to FPS, and then another one might be tuned to simulation. You can go through and you can customize that entirely through having those different toggle functions. Um, you're also gonna have right here, um, this really cool stealth key. So if you depress this, this will automatically minimize all your windows and mute everything on your system and you will be good to go. Let me go ahead and, and actually get my, my RGB lighting here. Um, reconnected. And uh, we're gonna take a closer look here in a moment here, but I just wanna give you guys a little bit of a closer look uh, to some of these features, make sure I get your guys' questions covered and uh, we'll keep moving those things along there. So give me one second here. All right, so let me go ahead and uh, open up a page here. And we're gonna go ahead and take a look at the Moonlight White uh, page and just give you guys a, a quick rundown of kind of some of the cool uh, elements that we've got here uh, for this keyboard. And again, um, make sure that you guys are kind of paying attention to some of these things because we are gonna, like I said, have a cool opportunity to be able to pick up um, some cool hardware at the end here in terms of our giveaway that we're gonna be running, okay? And I will go ahead and drop this in the uh, chat as well. So if you guys want to check this out, you guys can. But uh, here is the product page for the Moonlight White Keyboard. And pretty much we have gone ahead and covered just about all the kind of key specifications. But you can see just how great it looks in terms of when it's paired up with, of course, you know, our headphones, the keyboard, and the mouse. Uh, here are the RG NX switches. And this is kind of something that is a little bit special. So with the NX switches, these are our first kind of internally developed mechanical switches that are not optical. So we already rolled out the RG RX based switches, which were optical. And the main thing you're gonna see here is an improvement to the initial force. It's gonna not necessarily be as easy to go ahead and depress with I think traditional red switches. Sometimes people get false kind of initial actuations or initialization because it's a little bit soft. So we retune that a little bit. And we also set the actuation point and the reset point to the same value. And this just allows you to be much more responsive and crisp and consistent when you're hitting your keys um, to be able to make sure that everything is being registered as kind of uh, efficiently and as kind of consistently as possible. Um, in other cases, what you will sometimes find is that the actual actuation point um, there's a difference in terms of the reset point. Um, and that essentially can cause sometimes false kind of um, actuations or uh, registers of kind of that input. Um, you can also find out more if you actually head over here to the page, you can find out a great little video that actually goes through the entirety of the information regarding kind of the NX switch design. Here you can see your force curve information. Um, you can see total force, initial force. You can actually see a nice little keyboard typing test. And I can actually do a little bit of typing test. Why don't, why don't we go ahead and quickly just uh, see how this sounds. Now, one thing that I will tell you is that with the RX switches, um, we have also gone ahead and tuned them uh, for greater consistency. So one thing that people kind of don't realize with switches is, is that when they're produced um, inside the factory, there's gonna be some deviance um, essentially. And this is kind of fault tolerance between kind of one switch to another switch to another switch. The actual tolerances that we have specifically for RG uh, NX switches is gonna be greater than standard industry MX based switches. Um, and the advantage of that is that especially if kind of you're a really, I'd say fast hyper or somebody that's a little bit of a stronger kind of touch typist, you will feel more consistency across, you know, everything from when you hit P to Q to nine to B, it'll feel more consistent across the entirety, ultimately giving you a better experience. So let's go ahead and quickly see what this sounds like.
Overall, definitely not too loud. Definitely not like something that you would have with like a, let's say a blue type um, switch. They're soft, they're linear, they feel good. And overall, I definitely think a lot of you like it. If you want to be able to quiet them down, of course you can manually lube them or you could add something like an O-ring if you wanted to, uh, to the keycap. Um, but overall, um, they're really, really nice switches. And I think with the improvements that we've done in terms of that reset um, to actuation value being the same, the tighter tolerances that we have, the 70 million rating in terms of the overall lifespan, um, you're getting a really solid linear kind of gaming switch. So um, very, very nice in that regard. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, finish taking a look right here. Here you can see kind of a full breakdown of kind of all the information right there. And again, you can uh, hear them in action and you can find out how they compare against the other switches and whatnot. All right, guys. Let me go ahead and just double check any kind of questions right there. Hey, uh, water, uh, Waterfalls, uh, happy to have you, man. Thanks for joining us all the way from Australia, man. Great to have you here on the stream, man. Uh, if you've got any questions, if you miss anything, all we're doing is we're talking about our latest generation of Moonlight White Peripherals. So we've got uh, this guy right here, the brand new RG Strix Scope TKL and Moonlight White. So this is the first product we're talking about. But we're also going to be talking about the RG Strix Scope Core headset, um, the uh, Sutra 2 uh, in-ear headphones, and also the RG Strix Impact 2 mouse. Um, so these, you might be already familiar with them if you've seen our lineup because we already do have these in black variants. Um, just like I showed you right here, if we just do again a comparison, this is the RG Strix Scope. And then we've got the RG Strix Scope TKL in black. This, of course, has different keycaps to it, but you can see we've got the black and then the Moonlight White. All right, guys. So uh, let me go ahead and give you guys a little bit of a closer look. We're just going to uh, show you what it looks like a little bit tighter up here. So give me one second. Maybe also uh, help to show a little bit of a different value right here, guys. I'll do that as well. So give me one second here. And we'll update that here. And I'm just going to show you guys here what it kind of looks like uh, if we take a little bit of a closer look. So... All right, guys, so there you can see the keyboard uh, nice and kind of close up there. Let me go ahead and darken that up just a little bit so you can see. So you can see you've got that really nice uh, aluminum top frame right there. That helps to just add a nice kind of premium feel to it. You can see the per key RGB lighting that we've got there, right? And here you can see those RGB lock lights that I talked about right there. Uh, the arrow keys right there, like I said, in relation to the function key, that lets you control the onboard lighting. That is that stealth key that I talked about, that when you press the stealth key, that will automatically minimize all the actual um, windows that you have and automatically mute your system. You can also see right here that what we've done um, is prioritize on the top, you've got media keys as default. And so I prefer this because this means you can go ahead and you, know, you can play, pause, um, you can adjust your volume levels, right, and not have to make any kind of any kind of toggles, right? Um, and then you've got your traditional num keys. But if you did need to quickly toggle back between function keys and these media keys, then you can just hit that FN and then make that toggle to that key. All right. Um, and right here, you can see for one, two, three, four, five, this is where I talked about the function with one of those uh, would allow you to go ahead and make the adjustments to the profiles. So if we go ahead and tilt this a little bit, you might be able to see right there, there is one, two, three, four, five, six in default. So those are the integrated profiles, right? Uh, let's go ahead and pull a keycap off here. So you can see those are our per LED lighting implementations. These are the ROG NX base switches that we have on here. And one other thing that we'll find is that these actually have a little bit of a tighter tolerance than you're gonna have. So there's a little bit less wobble that you're gonna have in the keycap in itself, which is also something that um, I personally just find a little bit more comfortable and nice when we talk about the overall uh, typing experience. All right, guys. So that is a closer look there at the uh, ROG Strix TTL. Let me go ahead and uh, show you guys some of the different uh, RGB kind of color schemes. So give me one second and I'll get this angled here and I'll show you guys some of the alternate color schemes that we have right here. So 
a good kind of position right there. I think that that looks pretty good right there. All right, guys. Hey, Samir. Thanks for joining. Uh, hey, Joel. Also, thanks for joining us here on the stream, man. I would definitely agree. Very sweet in terms of the overall kind of design and aesthetic. Okay, guys. So uh, let me go ahead and... So if you guys uh, want to check this out, so you can see right here, if, um, let me see if I can pull that in a little bit. I'm on the function and the arrow keys. So you, if you look right here, I can go ahead and toggle that down. So you can see hardware level adjustment is available on this keyboard. So there I can adjust my brightness dynamically up and down, easy on the fly. If I also want to go ahead and maybe uh, toggle out my different lighting modes, you can see right there, I've switched to a different lighting mode. Here's a different lighting mode as well. I think this might be, yeah, you can see this is like a reactive lighting mode. And yeah, you can see this is a little bit, it's less, it's per pretty much key reactive. This is, I think, Starry Night is probably that this one is. There's another lighting mode. Hey, Joel. Uh, yeah, let me go ahead and bring you guys the link right here. You can actually pick these up right now on Amazon. So I've gone ahead and dropped in the link there in the chat so you can pick this up. This model right here is $119.99. Um, uh, but they are rolling out to even more e-tailers uh, over time. So you will be seeing them show up. Um, so here's, I think this is like a, I'll have to double check. I think this is a, like a rainfall. So there you guys can see, we got cool hardware level lighting control, uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and adjust this uh, within our Armory Crate software. So I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, quickly restart here uh, now that I've gone ahead and updated the software because I've never connected this keyboard before, but our software is called Armory Crate and Aura Creator. They're two different pieces of software. Armory Crate is going to go ahead and allow you to essentially uh, synchronize this with all your ASUS Aura compatible devices. So everything from our motherboards to graphics cards to headphones, mice, um, pretty much any RGB enabled ASUS Aura enabled device uh, will work through Armory Crate and then be able to sync through Armory Crate. And then if you want more advanced, like I said, zone-based lighting configuration, you can use Aura Creator where, like I said, if you want to have let's say um, half the keyboard have like maybe one pattern, have the bottom keyboard have another pattern. And then uh, if you remember guys, I talked about right here, this light bar, you can also fully control this light bar as well. So you can essentially kind of tune that however you'd like in terms of the overall kind of color scheme. So give me one second to go ahead and get in here and toggle over that and I'll get ready to go ahead and make those adjustments. Hey, uh, watch you. Thanks for uh, thanks for um, sharing some really cool designs. Yeah, if you're interested, make sure to go ahead and consider maybe joining our PCDIY Facebook group um, and sharing those designs. We'd love to be able to see what you've worked off and maybe also feature them in our PCDIY live streams, which we have on Fridays. So uh, thank you so much for uh, your interest and your support there at being able to do some really cool uh, wallpapers. So let me go ahead and open up the software here. All right, very cool. And see if I can kind of show you guys some of the different lighting modes. I want to probably tilt it just a smidge here, as you can see it a little bit more. There we go. Okay, very cool. So here we've got, um, this is your default kind of rainbow pattern, but we can play this around. So here we've got like a um, this is a gradient, so it would be like red to black. Um, I really like this one, which is actually kind of like a teal and green type of pattern uh, to it. It's got the kind of really cool look to it. Here we got a little bit more kind of a pink and purple kind of gradient, right? And these are all presets that are available, right? So you can play around with these as far as however you'd like in terms of the color scheme. You can, of course, go with something like a static and just pick your own specific color. So, you know, we could go something like blue. And, of course, you could have just a static blue. You've got uh, breathing, which of course will allow you to go in and out, and you can control the pacing for the breathing. So if you wanted the breathing to be really delayed or if you wanted to be quicker, you can go ahead and adjust that. 
you've got a strobing. And again, you can go ahead and uh, change the color, whatever you want in terms of the strobing. You've got a general color cycle, which will shift um, across colors, but across all the keys. Rainbow, which I, I talked about and showed first. Starry Night, which will kind of use a little Starry Night pattern across the entirety of the keyboard. And you can play around with this and kind of do all kinds of really interesting different gradients, different types of effects. Uh, you can go faster, you can go slower, uh, you can kind of play around with it. There's also a music uh, responsive mode, which is cool. We also have an adaptive color mode, which will actually work based on whatever you highlight in your system in terms of the color schemes. So whatever you end up highlighting in your system, so um, it will actually kind of match a color scheme to it, which is pretty cool. And then uh, a dark mode, right? Which is just turning across all your lighting off. So a lot of different options that you have uh, there in terms of setting that up. And uh, let me think right here. Yeah, so these are the last couple of ones I already showed you guys, but we've got, of course, the raindrop effect right here. And you can go ahead and kind of change these up. You can make a lot of adjustments. Uh, current mode. Quicksand. This one's pretty cool. The Starry Night. Ripple, which uh, Ripple, remember, guys, is you touch the keys and it will ripple across. The reactive, which is essentially a single key, is going to react. And I showed these in the close-up when we toggled these through the onboard. Rainbow, which you can go ahead and customize more, right? And that pretty much uh, closes out all the on-screen lighting effects, excuse me, um, the, on, the, the lighting effects that you have available through the Armory Crate software. And again, you can go ahead and, of course, uh, tailor this all to your liking, you know, whatever it is that you feel that you want to kind of go with there. All right, uh, let me go ahead and just double check, make sure to see if there's any kind of questions right there, and we'll keep moving things along. Yeah, um, I definitely agree. They do actually look really clean, and they do blend well. One tip that I will give you guys, and you guys might not necessarily be aware, but when you do connect the actual cable, um, you do ideally want to use USB 3 connectivity to get the best performance um, for your RGB lighting. Um, that's just because you're going to be sending a bit more data across the bus, and for the latency and the overall kind of performance of it, you do generally want to use a USB 3 um, connection. If you use USB 2, it will still work. It just might notice that it might not be as smooth in terms of some of the animations as it would be if you utilize a USB 3 connection. So that is just something to keep in mind that sometimes I've noticed some, some users aren't necessarily as aware that using a different port between like a USB 2 or USB 3 port can make a difference. Awesome, Phil. Man, thanks for being such a supporter over the years, man. Great to really have individuals like yourself and hopefully you maybe be able to pick up one of these cool pieces of hardware and our quiz and giveaway at the end of the stream here. Um, so that wraps up, again, the ROG Strix Scope TKL Moonlight White. It's a fantastic option if you want to go for a more compact keyboard that's more ergonomic. It's got per-key lighting, as you saw, really cool, a clean design aesthetic to it, detachable cable, um, and onboard memory profiles, and a whole lot more. It's going to be a really great option if you're looking for a great gaming-centric keyboard, and especially with those linear-based ROG nx base switches that are fast, responsive, sm uh, very smooth, um, and have a great lifespan going to be a great foundation for kind of your gaming setup. So next up, let's go ahead and move it on over to talking a little bit about our mice here. So that's going to be with this guy, the RG Strix Impact 2. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at that guy. Let me go ahead and uh, bring up that link for this guy as well here. So this is going to be the RG Strix uh, Impact 2. This is going to be a bit more of a, a compact mouse uh, that we offer. Um, still going to be good for, I think, a lot of different individuals. Uh, this is actually the black model right here, but uh, we're going to go ahead and use the white model, of course, because that is the Moonlight White. And uh, just kind of looking right, right off of that, it, it's got a really kind of clean design here. We'll just compare it kind of side by side to the black. Of course, I'm wearing a black T-shirt, so that almost kind of loses out. But you can see um, just it's got a really nice, clean profile. It is semi-ambidextrous, and I'm not going to say it's fully ambidextrous, and the main reason is because um, 
the actual buttons are uh, the side profile buttons are only on the right hand side. So you could, of course, disable these or make an adjustment if you're a left handed user. And so the ambidextrous body design is going to be beneficial for left hand or right hand based users. But it's not fully ambidextrous in the way some of our other mice in the past have had the ability to customize the location for these side profile buttons. So do keep that in mind. In terms of RGB lighting zones, you can see there's one RGB lighting zone here another RGB lighting zone in terms of the scroll wheel, the encoder, and then this really cool front facing two zones of RGB lighting right there. So all the way around, very slick, really nice looking mouse. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and get a little bit closer in here. You'll also see that it comes with this very, very long cable, but it's very lightweight. Uh, this cable, it's a TPE rubber, so it's very smooth. Part of the reason why we want the TPA based cable as opposed to something like um, a braided cable is is that with this type of cable it offers very minimal drag resistance and so when you're kind of bringing it over your table um, it's not necessarily kind of going to get uh, get a little scuffed or a little bit kind of uh, scratched up uh, in that regard and so having something lighter weight like this works great it's not as ultra lightweight as what we're going to have with um, our rg paracord which are on our flagship mice but it's quite nice so let me go ahead and show you guys a little bit of a closer shot of this mouse here so here you can see this is the RG Strix Impact 2 closer up. It's got a really nice design to it in terms of the overall hem. Here you're gonna, you can see, um, I would probably say if you've got a little bit smaller hands, you can definitely go palm with this. It's probably gonna be a little bit more for kind of claw and fingertip um, type uh, hand grips. But if you've got a little bit smaller hands, you could definitely do palm. The main issue with uh, kind of full coverage is that these two hands, if you've got a bigger hand, are going to be a little bit tighter. So they might kind of cramp up a little bit. Um, but to kind of give you a little bit of perspective in terms of dimensions, let's go ahead and compare this. This is our ROG Curious, very ultra lightweight wireless and wired mouse, which is a little bit more compact. And we'll go to something a little bit bigger for reference, like the ROG Chakram. So, or here, oh, actually we'll use the Pugia. So you can kind of see dimensions right there. Okay. So uh, again, here you can see one RGB lighting zone, another RGB lighting zone, and then right there in the front. If you take a look here at the base, you're gonna see that you've got your 100% PTFE skates that are right here uh, essentially and these are going to really offer a nice smooth and responsive sliding experience you can also see they're there around the optical sensor uh, you've got a hardware level dpi switch for four different dpi levels of adjustment hardware on the actual mouse itself your two side buttons right here a bit of nice uh, grip texture so that if you do want um you know a little bit of feel on the side profile of the mouse let's see if i can get a little bit tighter in there Yeah, you can see that nice little kind of texture that you've got. So it feels nice right up against the thumb. Okay. And one other really cool element that you're going to find actually on this mouse is going to be that when we take a closer look at it, it does feature something that's really going to be cool in terms of its design. So this is the RG Strix Impact 2 Wireless Edition. Um, in black, but it's going to fundamentally be the same in terms of the key feature I'm going to show you here. So if you were to remove those screws uh, from the underside right here, you would be able to open up the body. And one of the cool things right here is you can actually see this is the switch that you're depressing. So every time you click your mouse, like th right there, this is actually the switch that's being depressed. This is what's referred to as a micro switch. So let's go ahead and show you that a little bit closer up, guys. Right there. That right there is your micro switch. So traditionally, in terms of if you wanted to replace this micro switch, you would have to essentially use a soldering iron and you would have to remove this, which could be quite challenging in terms of um, potentially damaging your mouse and just having an issue. But the cool thing is here with uh, the ROG push fit socket design, I can pretty much pull that out. I can take out the switch. And then you can see right here, I've got a whole bunch of switches here. So these are all kinds of different types of switches. They have different types of characteristics in terms of not only their lifespan, but their feel, even a little bit of their uh, acoustic kind of experience when you talk about kind of how they quote unquote click. 
um, and they, you can customize it. So if let's say maybe you want to swap out and go with a different type of switch, I can pop that micro switch in there. You can see I've slotted it in. I'm gonna now put my shell back on. And now I've successfully gone ahead and transplanted my switch and I'm good to go. Now the really cool thing that you have here is that you don't have to do any type of soldering. This is essentially just a pretty much a toolless operation, right? You just need a screwdriver to be able to remove those screws. Um, you then remove the rubber grommets. So you can see right there, the rubber grommets are still on that one, right? But you remove those screws, take out the rubber grommets, you remove the shell, and then from there, you can change out those switches. So this is exclusive to RG Mice. It's what we call our, our push fit socket design. So it's a really cool option. Now, one other thing too it, that really does differentiate us is that the quality here of these switches are quite nice. Um, these switches are gonna be rated for 50 million clicks. So uh, traditionally on many of the other competitors, mice on the market, they're actually gonna be using much lower. So I can tell you, take for instance on the Death Adder Essential, it's only using a 10 million rated switch as opposed to the 50 million rated switch that we've got here. Um, there's other competitors that might have maybe like a 20 million um, or may maybe a 30 million, but we're offering you a 50 million rated switch right here. Hey, Aaron, let me see your question. Can you set custom DPI? Yeah. So yes, can you set the DPI? You can entirely set different DPI levels. So right here, you can see that you've got uh, your DPI switch. Let me go ahead and get a little bit tighter there for you. This is the DPI switch and you can set four different profiles for it. So uh, it already does have predefined profiles, but if you wanna customize that through the software, you can. And the other cool thing is that it does have onboard memory. Again, something like the uh, Death Adder Essential um, only has one memory profile. This has three memory profiles. So you can go ahead and customize um, the essential kind of operating parameters to different profiles. So you can do that. Now, uh, one other cool thing that I want to show you guys, and we'll show you this also in an on-screen image on the product page, because it's a little bit hard to see, but you might not realize is that when you make your depressions and you click on these, you might not realize that there actually can be a gap between the actual pivoted button mechanism. So this button right here and this small little plunger. So this little plunger that you have on the micro switch, when it's making a connection, there actually can be a little bit of a gap. And when you press this, it actually, you have to push this physically down to make contact with this. And so we actually have a, special pivoted design, and that pivoted design um, helps to essentially create a zero gap uh, contact. So when you're depressing this, you're getting a much more consistent level of depression every single time. And if I can show it to you, I'll try to see if I can get tight in here and show you, but you'll actually see um, right in tight inside there in the button mechanism, there's actually a little bit of a contact profile that is the pivoted button mechanism design. So even on something like on the inside of the mouse, it is a cool design mechanism that we have here to kind of really elevate the experience. So I will go ahead and show you guys what that looks like here in a moment. So let's go ahead and take a closer look here at the product page so you guys can just see what I'm talking about right there. Um, and again, very similar to what we talked about. That model also does have the uh, pivoted, uh, excuse me, um, uh, there you go. Um, that RG Strix Impact mouse does also have the same actually UVC finishing that we did here on the keycaps to make sure that you also get very good lifespan out of that. Uh, Waterfalls is the uh, 50 million. It's a 50 million uh, mechanical switch. So uh, if you wanted kind of an optical switch, then you would want to actually go for something like, uh, do I have one here? Sorry, I had to reach down there. Uh, our ROG Gladius. Our ROG Gladius um, has even higher performing ROG, um, ROG micro switches, which are these red micro switches. And these actually have also a gold electro plating on the inside. Um, these are three pin um, rated for outstanding lifespan. And then on top of that, um, you can also, on this mouse, support optical or mechanical micro switches. So you can actually do either or. Um, but let me go ahead and bring up the page here, guys, and uh, we'll go from there. So give me one second. Oh, 
Okay, so here we go. Um, and so like I talked about, uh, in terms of the overall, it's a semi-ambidextrous -ambi based design, 6200 DPI, um, very solid, no hardware acceleration, optical grade sensor from Pixar, um, that push fit socket design, 79 grams, so it's actually a lightweight based mouse, so it's very nice in terms of just kind of moving it around. You've got that on the fly DPI level of adjustment that's on there, three onboard memory profiles that are on the mice as well that nice soft TPE uh, rubber cable that you have on here, that textured finish with the two side profile buttons, right? Um, here you can see those key specifications for of course 220 IPS and 30G in terms of the acceleration. And here's that pivoted, uh, pivoted button mechanism that I was talking about, right? So you can actually see that the design, it's directly making contact with the top of the micro switch plunger so that every time you're clicking, it's actually helping to make sure that you're having consistent contact. And here you can see also a hinge and a spring that's part of that entirety of that design. It's something that you kind of can't really see and notice until you actually try it, but it does make a nice difference, especially if you're somebody that's really clicking actively. So I like playing a lot of uh, RTS games and I'd say a single player based FPS, but definitely in both of those type of games, I've noticed the experiential difference between having a mouse that doesn't have a pivoted button mechanism and one that does have the pivoted button mechanism. Um, the multiple zones of RGB lighting, where you can see one here on the RGI, one on the encoder, and then it also has the RGB lighting in the front. Remember guys here that I showed you guys where it's got the RGB lighting in the front, right? And we also do have it in a couple of different designs where I showed you the wireless edition, which comes in black and is also a wired USB-C, or you can also get the standard black. That model's even $10 even cheaper. We have an Electro Plunk edition as well. And we still are going to be bringing in, I think, a little bit, uh, I, this Gundam edition is no longer available, but you do have two other variants there of the RG Strix Impact. And this one is coming in at $49.99. Hey, GPS Stuntman, thanks for that feedback there. That's definitely something that I will, um, you know, feedback to our, you know, product management team um, and see, you know, if maybe it's something that they'll look to kind of revise over time. I can definitely tell you that we feel very confident in terms of the overall design and the, the fit and the finish and the quality and the performance and lifespan um, of the product. I think even, like I said, in the fact that, um, a competitor might potentially have that longer warranty, but if you consider like the most common point of failure being something like the micro switch and you having to either attempt to damage your mouse by uh, using a soldering iron, right? Um, and uh, replacing that, you can do that easily there, which helps extend the lifespan. Um, also the construction quality is I think very, very good. So you don't get a, a mouse that sometimes kind of has these creak and crattle, uh, kind of creaks to it or kind of feels a little bit kind of not that well uh, managed. That's, I think, another nice design element. And even having the four screws that that mouse has to be able to kind of tighten it up and keep a really nice tight on top body is also a nice other, another nice design attribute of this mouse. All right, guys. So that takes care of the ROG Strix um, Impact 2 in Moonlight White. So let's get ready to move it along here to our next item, which is going to be this guy right here. Um, a really cool headset that we've got here with the ROG Strix, um, excuse me, the ROG Strix Go Core uh, in Moonlight White. So this is going to be an analog based headset. We do actually have quite a number of different versions of the ROG Strix Go headset. We've got a Bluetooth version. We have a USB-C 2.4 gigahertz wireless version. Um, so we've got a lot of different options depending on what your preference is in terms of the connection, right? Um, overall, really here, the goal with this headset was to be able to offer something that was lightweight, um, you know, cost reasonable, looks great, and has good uh, solid audio quality and actually a good solid microphone as well. So let me go ahead and actually place it on here, guys, so you can check it out. Check it out. I think it looks pretty nice. Nice minimal kind of ear cup design. Of course, has full adjustment right here. Nice padding here at the top, right, to help you feel nice and comfortable. Um, minimal compression or clamping force that you have right here. Of course, full adjustments right here so that if you want to go ahead and be able to adjust relative to your head size, you can do that. They do have a nice lay flat design right here. So if you want to put them around your neck, you can go ahead and put them around your neck. No issues in that. Um, and let me actually go ahead and just share the link for this guy as well in the chat, guys. This is the RG Strix Go Core Moonlight White. Okay. 
And you can see it's got a nice lay flat design. This cable right here is a three and a half millimeter uh, analog audio cable. Um, it does have a four pole connection by default. So that's great because it can also be used on mobile devices. So if you've got um, um, a smartphone that still actually has a headphone jack, then you can go ahead and use it directly with that. If not, there is an accessory cable and I'll show you a closer shot of this cable here in a moment but there's an accessory cable that does then give you a traditional pole connection along with mic connection, right? So you can go ahead and extend this, make this even longer. That's great. So you can go ahead and connect this for, you know, a console, a switch, a laptop, a desktop, whatever it might be, whatever type of system you want, you've got flexibility in terms of connecting your cables to it. You do have on, uh, on ear cup controls to be able to go ahead and mute the microphone and a nice smooth analog uh, volume wheel. Now I will tell you that I generally recommend setting the volume to maximum here and then controlling your uh, volume digitally through let's say your, your system. So whether that's like a laptop, um, your console or whatever other device. Um, but this works well like if you're in a situation where you don't have easy, easy access to the hardware level volume controls, excuse me, the software level volume controls, you can make an adjustment in that regard. And then you can, of course, also detach the mic and reattach it right there. So show you how that looks there with the mic. It is fully adjustable. And it does have a nice little filter right there to help to minimize it. explosives, right? And I will tell you from definitely trying it out, um, just rest it not super close. You want to have it a little bit out, but it's got nice, good intellig intelligibility to it. It's not, I, I'd say, um, heavily skewed in any direction. It's not warm, it's not cold, it's just a nice, clean, neutral sounding uh, mic. It works well, especially for gaming in that regard. You got a reasonable amount of isolation there too, which is nice in terms of kind of pushing out any type of ambient noise that you might have from like, let's say a fan or an HVAC system or just kind of other sounds that you have around there. Um, let's go ahead and take a closer look on our secondary B cam here and we will keep moving this along. Uh, hey, watch out. This is not a wireless model, but we do have a wireless version. So if you're interested in a wireless version, we have the ROG Strix Go 2.4 and the ROG Strix BT. Um, both of those models are wireless. So you can either go 2.4 or you can go ahead and go with Bluetooth adaptive low latency wireless. Um, but both of those models are in black. So if you want specifically the Moonlight White model, then this one only comes in the wired based version, but we do have wireless uh, headset of this RG Strix Go. So pretty much like all the other aspects that I'm talking about are gonna be present in those models, except for the fact that they will give you wireless connectivity, okay? Uh, cable length, um, I can show you here the cable length. It's pretty much, I'm six foot tall. You could easily run this. It's, it's a really long cable. It's not a short cable, so it's really great. So you can see right here, um, like I said, I'm I'm six foot. You can see my wingspan's pretty long. This could run easily, right? The length of any kind of traditional system setup if you want. But if you want to make it longer, that's the cool thing is that we give you this extension right here. So you can go and connect that. And then you've got even additional length that you can play with. And like I said, that also gives you a split connector right there for um, your analog level connection for let's say your headphone or for the mic depending on your system setup or configuration, right? So you get that um, Yes, it does support a uh, high resolution audio. It is a high-res uh, certified headset okay. So let me go ahead and uh, just Move this around here and we'll go over to our secondary cam All right, guys. And let me tone that down just a little bit so it's not so bright. Okay, so yeah, let me switch that up. So you can see really nice looking headphone, right? You've got this really nice soft matte white uh, design aesthetic. And like I said, this is a swivel based ear cup design. It is also foldable, which is nice too. So you can see right here, I can go ahead and make it more compact and I can fold it, which is nice. So if you wanna be able to kind of stow it away, you're good to go. You got the same kind of similar soft TPE rubber cable right here, which is really nice. You got your padded, of course, uh, right here, padding for the, your head. Then you have your uh, metal. 
nice accents right there with the RG. And they do kind of have nice kind of click level adjustments. So you can go ahead and, and kind of tune it into the right size for your head. If we go ahead and flip these over right here, these are going to feature our Asus Essence drivers. These are 40 millimeters. Uh, I will tell you definitely they're tuned well in terms of having a neutral overall kind of sound stage. They don't skew to kind of be warm and they don't skew to be sibilant or bright. Um, they're well suited towards gaming, but also listening to music, um, you know, watching videos and, and watching movies. Um, they work really well for that. They overall a very solid, I think, kind of neutral sounding headset that's got a reasonable amount of bass extension, good mid range, and kind of, I'd say, a solid treble. Definitely not a bright treble, um, but it's it's solid in that regard. And so they do well, especially I think at wanting to be able to pick up environmental sounds where you don't want too much of a heavy bass and you don't want too much kind of strong sibilance, which can be a little bit grating towards your ears. So overall, that's nice. You got nice soft padding right here with a, a good amount of breathability. I would definitely say even if you're playing for like an hour, two hours, you can still be comfortable. These weigh, I believe, 200 and uh, how much is two? 246, I was going to say 236, 246 grams. So they actually are quite lightweight in terms of the overall headphones. So you can definitely wear them for quite a bit of period of time. Um, right here, you can see that's the on cup earphone, uh, uh, excuse me, on cup volume adjustment. Um, here's right here where you can go ahead and mute the microphone if you want. And there's right there where you could go ahead and connect your microphone. So here you can see the mic. Go ahead and get that in. It locks into place, and now you've got your mic in place. Pretty straightforward. Let me go ahead and just double check if there was any questions right there. Hey, uh, no, the Delta, right now, we don't have any plans for a wireless Delta. We definitely know that there's quite a number of users that are interested. I would definitely say, you know, check out uh, the ROG Strix Go BT or the ROG Strix 2.4. The Delta is a little bit challenging because it also uses even larger drivers and it has a quad DAC implementation. So there's a lot of challenges with tuning things right and also battery consumption at making that type of a specific type of model for wireless configuration. Um, but we definitely know that there are users that are interested in that. Um, hey, um, no questions I can answer really right now regarding kind of the Kunai, which is our gaming controller. It's actually also covered under our systems team, not actually our open platform business team. And uh, the main difference is that our OPBG team is all about kind of the PC DIY experience and all those type of referrals. The Kunai has specifically been developed for our ROG phone. Um, so it's actually a systems related product. But stay tuned in the not too distant future. We're going to be actually having a ROG systems, excuse me, um, an ASUS system stream where definitely you can answer those questions, but feel free also just reach out to us. You can send in any type of questions you want and you know, feel free if you want, just drop your chat in there and I can see if I can follow it afterwards and, and respond on YouTube, YouTube or Facebook or wherever you're watching, okay? Um, hey, Felipe, no, you have not missed the giveaway. Uh, giveaway is gonna be coming up at the end of the stream here. I've got one more product to go through and then we're gonna be having a little bit of a quiz um, that will actually cover that and we were gonna be giving away the keyboard, the mouse, and this headset. So there's gonna be three different items that we're gonna be giving away, but keep in mind that is limited to our North American users um, and viewers. So if you're in North America, or you're in Canada, you're good to go. So just keep that in mind. Yep, I definitely agree. That keyboard is fantastic looking. It's a beautiful design aesthetic. You know, let me go with a little bit of a, a blue vibe here. I'm gonna change it up here. I like this little kind of blue aesthetic that it's got. Yeah, I think that's that's nice. Very nice. Okay, um, so let's go ahead and keep moving this along. Go ahead and just give this one more adjustment for you guys so you guys can just check it out. And so you guys again can see just how it looks. Again, this microphone is fully detachable, so it's great for when you wanna be on the go and you don't wanna have to worry about this mic. All right? nice soft cable, right? on ear cup controls, fully adjustable, nice soft padding, 246 grams, right? Nice tuned drivers, which are well balanced. Overall, very nice headset. And again, I think it's only coming in at uh, 79.99. Yeah, so very reasonable price point. And again, for those of you who were asking, do we have a wireless uh, version? Uh, we do have a wireless version, the ROG Strix Go. Um, excuse me, yeah, ROG Strix Go 2.4 gigahertz. Um, and then also the ROG Strix 
um, go BT. So those are two different models that we have in terms of wireless configuration. All right, so give me one second here, guys. And I'm just gonna run you through here, just the page so we can just double check a look at the, a couple items here. So again, here guys, you can see pretty much uh, somebody was asking about you know hybrid certification. You can see hybrid certification uh, specs right here. You can see all the specs are broken down for you, pretty straightforward. 3.5 millimeter, so it's analog. It's a wired base headset. You can see broad level of compatibility, right? It, headphone impedance is only 32 ohms, so that means it can pretty much be driven by any type of device. No problems right there. And you can see very lightweight uh, design there, right there. And then 1.2 meters in terms of the two cables. So it's essentially a, a total of 2.4 meters. And you can see, of course, just how great it pairs with all the other uh, devices as part of the Moonlight White. All right, guys, so that wraps up our RG Strix Go Core Moonlight White. Gotta watch it. I got a hook and loop fastener right there. Impeding a little bit there, my setup. So let me go ahead and just set that back there. All right. And next up, we are going to. Now, lastly, talk about these guys right here. So these are actually fairly new. Um, these are actually our in-ear headphones. Some people sometimes refer to them as IEMs. Um, these are the Cetra 2, so these are the latest generation. And these are quite special in terms that they're one of the few actually in-ear um, headphones that actually utilize liquid, uh, excuse me, liquid silicone rubber in terms of actually the driver composition material. So traditionally, most of the times, um, you usually see stuff that's made out of mylar, um, a multi-polymer uh, composite, um, maybe using PET or something along those. The challenge is, is that when you're developing essentially um, that material and the driver in such a small package, you actually have to use glue for layering and for bonding different things like that. And that can actually cause variants when you're talking about the actual production of the IEM. And the reason why that actually can be important is that this can cause a discrepancy in terms of the sound profile between uh, the left and the right hand side, or essentially just in mass production, kind of one model to another model to another model to another model, there can be a little bit more variance between one and then another, even though they're in the same production. Going over to this liquid silicone rubber uh, technology allows for actually a much more consistent molding process each and every single time so they can actually be tuned much more precisely. Um, and there's also something without getting too technical, it's called amplitude. And the performance of the way this driver can actually be um, driven, if you actually talk about the way that actually kind of like a diaphragm works in terms of like a speaker or a, you know any kind of device like this, is that it's going in and out, right? That reverberation and that amplitude, essentially how much it comes out actually equates to your volume, essentially how loud and how dynamic something can sound. Um, and this actually has generally a higher level amplitude than what you would see in a traditional driver. In the end, just this means is that the sound is gonna be actually more what's called in phase, um, less out of phase. It's gonna sound tight and clean. I can definitely tell you with a wide range of music, I've listened to everything from EDM to jazz to rock, you know, to R&B, um, pop, pretty much across the board, and it's a great sounding in-ear headphone. Um, they're very comfortable, um, and we'll definitely show you a little bit closer up kind of some of the nice range of accessories and everything that comes included with this um, Cetra 2. So give me one second right here, and we will go ahead and get a little bit tight in here, guys, and show you everything that this guy comes with. And I will also, again, uh, bring this guy here up in the chat. And it's very reasonably priced, only $59.99, um, and very nice. Uh, set that you can kind of pocket in with you. All right. So here you can see we've got uh, these guys right here. Very nice. 
Now you can see that I've gone ahead and already included the uh, the nice little kind of tips right here to allow this to kind of just fit very comfortably in my ear. So I can tell you definitely I had no issues, never fell out once, um, you know? So if you wanna be able to add those in, you can go ahead and just drop those on and have a very nice comfortable feel in terms of that when you position that in. These are very lightweight, nice and malleable. They're also um, wash friendly. So you can go ahead and make sure that if you wanna wash these after a little bit of period of time, they're not gonna degrade or anything along those lines. Of course, you've got a wide number of uh, replaceable tips that come included so that you can go ahead and get it tuned to the right size. You'll also see a little triangle because there's actually an internal bracing mechanism that we have that actually helps to keep this a little bit taut as opposed to compressed in, and that helps to create a little bit of a better seal. You'll find very commonly that most actually tips do not have this like kind of little um, internal bracing design that actually helps in that regard. See a very nice clean ROG design there in white. You get your, of course, your nice little travel case. You can open this up and you will see that you got a nice little set of accessories here. You've got a little extension right there as well as one that splits out to that if you've got um, mic and headphone, you've got that available to you right there. You've got more, of course, quote unquote, uh, fit tips right there. So you can adjust that if you've got smaller ears or larger ears. And then of course you have also different size tips right there along with uh, that you can go ahead and adjust to find out whatever works best for your ears. And you can keep those all inside in your nice little case, right? Um, looking closer right there, you can also see that you've got um, on ear, excuse me, um, yeah, uh, I mean, well, on cable based adjustment. So you can lower the volume, you can raise the volume, you can go ahead and uh, play and pause. You can also make track adjustment right there. So that's all integrated right there. And you've also got the mic built into it as well. And then your standard, of course, uh, analog based connection, all on one nice lightweight headphone, or well, in ear headphone. So these are the Setcher 2. And let me go ahead and just uh, bring up here the product page for these guys. Now we also do have a um, fully digital version of this model. So if you do want to go ahead and connect this natively with USB-C take for instance, we do have a USB-C version of these that you can go ahead and also pick up, but they are gonna come in uh, black. They're not gonna be in the white. So if you want the white, you will be looking at the analog brace, uh, versions of these. Okay, great. There you go. So here you can see, um, high res certified as well, 3.5 uh, millimeter, of course, analog based connection, of course, and it comes included with that adapter to be able to extend things out and also give you a dual, um, dual plugs. So you can have one dedicated for the micro one dedicated for the headphone. You can see cross compatible, not only with, of course, mobile devices, um, but things like a switch, but also consoles as well as the PC laptop, um, excuse me, <clears throat> laptop or desktop. It's a 90 degree angled connection, which is nice because it doesn't necessarily have to be kind of obstructively just kind of hanging out, which works well. And as I noted right here, here's really one of the key things is that that uh, comes with the ultra soft um, uh, liquid silicone rubber fins as well, which also really help to have that nice, uh, very comfortable feel uh, to the overall I kind of fit um, when you talk about installing these guys in there. Hey, Watcha, thanks for that feedback there. Uh, it's always appreciated there in terms of that. So that uh, gives you a little bit of insight there. So give me one second. There is still something I want to show you guys here. So give me one moment. And I want to give you guys a little bit of a closer look here. Uh, 
So here you guys can see when I was talking a little bit about that internal design in terms of why I wanted to make a little bit of note in terms of what we were using in terms of the uh, LSR based driver. Um, it's critical in terms of kind of understand that, that that's really what helps to actually, I think, provide the tonality and the consistency of the audio experience when you have this. Um, and so that is kind of one of the key elements that you have. So normally in most kind of in-ear monitors, you're not going to find this because it's actually a very novel technology. It's a very recent. So uh, most manufacturers have not integrated this type of technology into their in-ear headphones. Um, so it is, uh, I'd say, pretty unique right now from a perspective that there's not too many choices out there if you're looking to be able to get um, a headphone that does feature this new type of driver technology. All right, guys. So that wraps up there the ROG uh, Citra in ear headphones. So, all the way around, um, you know, I think a pretty cool showcase of some sweet hardware that we've got right here when we talk about the series of Moonlight White based peripherals, right? So, the ROG Strix Scope TKL in Moonlight White, the ROG Strix. Impact 2 in Moonlight White, the RG Strix Go Core in Moonlight White, and then the Sutra 2s in Moonlight White. Four different great products that I think really offer you a great experience if you're looking for, um, you know, white, white themed products to be able to kind of complement the look and feel for your system, or you're just set up, or maybe it's just some awesome base accessories that you want to be able to add for whatever type of system or whatever type of device that would be complementary to these. Um, also, again, do keep in mind that we have many of these products, pretty much all of them in alternate kind of like black colorways. So again, here I showed you guys the RG Strict Scope TKL. This is the same exact keyboard, it's in black. I've gone ahead and changed the keycaps right there, but you get the point that you can get this in black or you can get it in white. The same thing here for the headphones, you can get them in black. Um, the RG Strict Impact 2 there that I showed you, it's the same mouse right there, but you can also get it in black. And same thing with the Citra 2s. So just give you a little bit of perspective. All right, so give me one second here, guys. I'm gonna open up our portal uh, to get ready here for our giveaway. So for the, again, those of you guys uh, here that are interested in opportunity in terms of winning some hardware, we're gonna make this happen. So give me one second to go ahead and get logged in here. And I'm just going to take a moment right here, guys, uh, so I can go ahead and log in for the information that we'll need. And the way that this will work is we're actually going to be utilizing an online platform. It's called Kahoot Games. So there's actually going to be four questions in a poll. I'd love to hear your guys' feedback on what was your favorite product in terms of the Moonlight White. You can also go ahead and just drop that in the comments and let me know. Did you like the keyboard, the mouse, the uh, headset, or the in-ear headphones the most? What was it that you actually liked the most about it? And if you're also interested in seeing maybe another uh, white product in the future from us, let us know what you would like to see. Keep in mind, like I said, we already have white motherboards. We have white graphics cards, power supply chassis, uh, CPU coolers, uh, and routers, uh, uh, all uh, under our, in terms of our white um, ecosystem. So we've got quite a number of products. And then, of course, also even on the system side, uh, we've got a white ROG phone. And we also, of course, have Moonlight white laptops as well. So we've got a very extensive white lineup. But love to have your guys' feedback there. So it'll be pretty straightforward. Uh, you guys would just need to be able to log in. It will ask you to register. And the reason why the registration is required is because I do need to make sure that we have uh, the winner's email information so that we can follow up with that winner uh, so that we can reach out to you and get you out your prizing, OK? All right, guys, I should have it here in a moment. OK, guys, so all you guys need to do is just head over to the link right here. Uh, let me go ahead and actually drop that in there in the chat. And uh, you guys are just going to need to enter in the pin.
And for everybody in the chat, the pin is going to be 6489037. So let me go ahead and also drop that there in the chat. And I'm going to give everybody a little bit of time to make sure that you guys can get in there. Um, hey, uh, you don't have to be part of Twitter to be part of this giveaway or anything like that. And also, um, I'd recommend if you're not, make sure to check out our PCDOI group right now. We actually have some other giveaways and promotions that have been going on recently, and uh, they didn't require Twitter either. So definitely, you know, uh, we try to minimize, you know, obstructions to giveaways when we can, you know, depending on what they may or may not be in terms of what the requirements are. Um, but definitely thanks for that feedback. All right, so it looks like we're getting some people that are logging in right here. Uh, we're gonna give it uh, maybe, I'm gonna give it two minutes overall, two minutes to let um, as many people as they can get in here so that we can hopefully have um, a good level of competition right here. And we're gonna see. Uh, of course, if we get less amount of people in there, then of course that means you guys have an increased opportunity to win. So good guy, good for you guys. So uh, we're scaling it up. Looks like we got Felipe, we got Wacho, we got Aaron, we got Gio, we got RC Mike, um, got some people joining in here for this giveaway. So uh, looks like Anton, Anton just joined as well. Okay, well, fantastic guys. Let's go ahead and keep giving it a little bit of time. Like I said, I'm gonna give it two minutes. So 417, we're gonna kick off this and it'll be pretty straightforward. You guys are gonna get four questions. Uh, there's gonna be a question uh, for the keyboard. There's gonna be a question for the mouse. There's gonna be a question for the headset and there's gonna be a question for the in-ear headphones. And then a quick poll question that will just ask you guys, you guys can let us know uh, what was your favorite product in terms of what we have for the Moonlight White? Um, so there will be, of course, three winners and there's going to be three prizes. Uh, so um, the first white prize winner will be able to go ahead and select which of the three items they want. So we're going to be doing a giveaway for the Moonlight White keyboard, uh, for the mouse, and for the headset. So if you're number one, you get to pick which one you want, and then it will default to number two getting the pick, and then three will get uh, essentially whichever item one and two did not pick. So pretty straightforward. It uh, looks like we've got some additional people that have joined in. Fantastic. Very cool. So again, we've got about a minute left here. So definitely join in when possible. And let's see what happens here. And thank you guys for again joining the stream. It's been fantastic to be able to talk to you guys about these latest series of products that we've got in terms of the ROG Moonlight White series of peripherals. And again, these all are currently available, so you can check them out. I will go ahead and uh, right before we start this off, just drop the, drop the last uh, links here in the chat again. So the RG Strix Go Core Moonlight White, the RG Strix Scope NX TKL keyboard, the RG Strix uh, Impact 2, and then the RG uh, Citra 2 Core. And those are, these are all the Moonlight White base versions. All right, guys, uh, looks like we've got everybody joined in here. So let's go ahead and kick this off. All right, so let's see what's going on here. And I will let you guys go ahead and see uh, the action right here. What type of switches did the ROG Strict Scope NXTKL Moonlight uh, excuse me, keyboard feature? This one probably should be pretty straightforward. All right, and the right, the right answer was the ROG Red NX switches. And do keep in mind, we will have different versions of the ROG NX switches and other products. So these are our latest switches, which are designed for that nice, smooth, linear experience, more consistency between each and every single key, and that same nice reset and actuation experience, along with a re uh, an optimized uh, initialization force. All right, so it looks like Eric is in first place right now. Let's go ahead and go. Next question here. Can you replace the switches on the RG Strix Impact 2 mouse without soldering? Well, let's see. True or false? We went through a uh, cool demonstration here, so hopefully you guys will be able to figure out whether or not I had to do any type of soldering. 10 seconds to go here. All right, let's see. 
Oh, wow. All right. Everybody got, got it right. So it is true. That is correct. You can go ahead and 100% change out these switches on ROG mice that feature our push fit socket design. That means you pretty much just uh, remove a couple screws, grommets, lift off the shell, and drop in whatever switches you're looking to be able to go ahead and replace, assuming they are the correct micro switches and they uh, support interoperability and compatibility. So yes, no soldering required. All right. Looks like, oh, Geo moved into first place. All right, let's go. Question number three. Does the ROG Strixscope Core Moonlight White have a detachable microphone? This one is probably pretty easy, assuming if you're maybe looking somewhere in the frame and maybe looking at the headset, you might be able to see whether it does or does not, right? Uh, we'll see how many of you get this one right. All right, looks like uh, most of you guys got it right in terms of it correct. It does have a detachable mic. So again, uh, ROG Strix Impact, you just can go ahead and detach the mic or attach it whenever you need it. All right, looks like uh, Geo is still staying in first place there. All right, let's go with the last question right here. So what type of drivers uh, do uh, the ROG Cetra 2 Core More Light White use? So remember, these are brand new drivers. We talked about traditionally what most kind of in-ear headphones or in-ear monitors are utilizing in terms of that type of material. Um, and Asus was really excited to be able to introduce these new type of drivers which offer um, better amplitude performance, better phase performance, um, and ultimately just give you a better experience when it comes to an in-ear headphone. And it looks like most of you guys got that one right. That's correct, is LSR-based drivers. Very, very cool. All right, so let's go ahead and wrap this up with a quick poll, guys. Let us know what your thoughts are there. What was your favorite Moonlight White product? I don't want to bias anybody, uh, but I think that the keyboard is pretty sweet, right? I absolutely love that really nice uh, white aesthetic with that silver accent, the hardware-level lighting control, the integrated profiles, the fact that I have a detachable keyboard uh, cable, all those things and more really make for a fantastic item. Uh, looks like, wow, some good mix here. So um, nice set of options right there as far as uh, actually the headset was the most popular. Cool. All right, guys. Okay, so let's see who won. Eric came in third. GP came in second. And number one. Number one is Aaron. All right. Fantastic. Very, very cool. And uh, congrats to our runners up, uh, Gio. And I'm sorry, I missed uh, who I last saw right there as far as our runner up. So fantastic. Um, guys, I will go ahead and help to follow up there in terms of uh, we should have captured your information there in terms of our winners here. So we'll help to go ahead and follow up with you guys. Um, if you guys can go ahead and make sure and drop a comment and confirm your winner. Um, that way I can go ahead and follow up if needed directly through the chat and go with you guys. But we should have had your captured information when you logged in right there. And uh, as I said, um, congrats again to Aaron. You will get to be able to pick which item you want right here, this keyboard, this mouse, or this headset. So with that, guys, that wraps up our live stream here on the latest generation of white peripherals that we've got under the ROG uh, lineup here. So with that, guys, uh, take care, take it easy, enjoy your rest of your guys' day. And if you're checking us out on uh, video on demand, right, on Facebook or on YouTube, make sure to go ahead and drop us a like, a comment. And if you're not following us or subscribing, make sure to go ahead and do that, guys. With that, take care, take it easy, enjoy the rest of your day.